Warning, the information provided in this video is for educational purposes only. Proceed at your own risk. Common ragweed, also known as Ambrosia artemisifolia, this member of the composite family is an annual, meaning its lifespan is only one year and it can be found growing throughout the United States and Canada in cultivated grounds and roadsides. The plant will grow from one to six feet tall and it has green flowers that are in bloom from July to October. The flowers have parts indistinguishable, the staminate flower heads grow in racemes one to six inches long, whereas the pistillate flowers grow in small clusters. The plant has opposite or alternate leaves, and the leaves are divided into narrow segments. The segments are irregularly toothed or lobed. The pollen of ragweed is well known for causing allergies, and touching this plant may cause allergic reactions. When consumed by cows, it will cause their milk to retain a bitter taste, or if it is harvested with wheat, the bitterness will cause the flour to be unfit for bread making. Historically, American Indians such as the Cherokee would crush the leaves and rub it on poison insect stings. A tea was made from the plant and used for pneumonia, a leaf tea was taken for fevers, a leaf tea was rubbed on hives, and the juice was squeezed from a wilted leaf and applied to an infected toe. The plant was also used to treat intestinal worms and related problems. The Dakota made an infusion of leaves and plant tops and took it to stop vomiting and used it for bloody diarrhea. The Delaware made a poultice of the plant and used it to prevent blood poisoning. The Huma made a decoction of the roots and took it for menstrual troubles. The Iroquois boiled the plant and a tea was made for cramps from picking berries. The root was cooked into a decoction and used for strokes, four to five cups was taken a day. For bad diarrhea with bleeding, four plants each of great ragweed and common ragweed was boiled in two quarts of water to make a decoction and then drank. The Lakota made an infusion of leaves and applied it to swellings. The Luisino Indians used the plant to cause vomiting, and the Mahuna Indians made an infusion of the plant and used it as a wash for minor skin eruptions and scalp diseases. Now according to historic western herbal medicine, the medicinal part is the leaves. Its actions were stimulant, astringent, hemostatic, and antiseptic. It was used for fevers, diarrhea, dysentery, bleeding of the nose and other parts, inflammation from wounds and other injuries. A salve was made by bruising the green leaves and simmering them in spirits and cream. It was then used on hemorrhoids and ulcers. As for the plant's other uses, the plant was historically used as toilet paper, but I'd advise you to use it with caution. Hi, I'm Mike from Plight to Freedom, and I'd like to thank you for taking your time out to watch my video. I hope you found this information to be useful, and if you have, please help this project grow by liking, subscribing, and sharing this information with your friends and family. For more information on wildflowers, visit me at plighttofreedom.com. And as always, keep your eyes and ears open and your powder dry.